Hey guys, it's Leo and it's time to talk about episode 21 of Hug to Precure. This episode brought us a little um, Emidu drama together with some Papuru drama as well. And so there's a lot to talk about. So let's jump right into it. Uh, in this episode, we had the continuation of the fact that Emidu and Lulu became cures last episode. And so they introduced themselves to the Hato team. It was really nice because we had an introduction done by Lulu and Emiru read it before the episode started and right at the last moment the other girls jumped in like don't forget about us we're still part of Hugto as well um, and it was cute I liked that and I like this type of interaction <clears throat> and so um, <clears throat> Emiru is still trying to learn her ways of being a precure for her this is a very serious thing it was her dream and now that she is a precure she is trying to find her own way of being one and because of that she was trying to observe the girls she was trying to find out what was really going on and how the girls excelled in their activities but um ultimately um Amiru is a very eager type of person she's very eager she is very um she is very driven and because of that things tend to become a little dramatic and over the top with her uh and so um harry is very observant as well and i think that harry has this good characteristic about him which is he tries to um to help someone but not only uh, giving them words, but also giving them something to do. And that's a good thing, and that works a lot with some people. And with Emiru, did it work out in this episode? I don't really think so, but I liked the way he tried. <clears throat> so Emiru went out on the streets, and she was trying to, you know, to help people and to be like this good Samaritan that she is always trying to be. But she ultimately failed. And because of that, she thought she thought that it was something that it wasn't good enough. She was not good enough to be a precure because she failed in something basic. Um, I think that this was a little too much. The drama was a little too much for me. It wasn't really uh, palpable, but it, it it comes from Emiu, a character who is very exaggerated in everything, and she feels everything very deeply. So I do kind of understand. There's this double thing. Like I don't really understand, but at the same time I do. Um, and so I think that Emiu's way of dealing with that was a lot of frustration, and it was interesting because there was a little bit of rupture between her and Lulu and Lulu was trying to understand what she was feeling because she's not human she is an android and for us humans to understand what we feel it's hard uh, but for her who is an android who is way more rationalized and she has like a rationalized way of thinking about everything it must be even harder and you know I liked the way she was talking with the girls and the girls were trying to help her and it's interesting that sometimes the girls they split up a little bit and we have like different groups inside the Hugto group and you know a little uh, one part of the group helped her and one part of the group helped Emiru and I really liked when Emiru called Harry Nezumi-san uh, it was it was a very funny moment and you know I always like when Harry goes nuts when people call him a rat uh, but together with that we had another drama Jellos is now officially a part of Kriasu Corp. She wasn't before, but she has worked for them. But now she is officially a part of Kriasu Corp. And Papadou was very angry because, um, you know, Jellos was not afraid to, to you know, to, to go after Papadou. You know, she was not afraid. She went on after her. She criticized her in front of her bosses. It was like, girl, come on. And um, one thing that I noticed, it's not that I noticed, it was kind of obvious. The way they did it was kind of obvious. The blue villain, which I don't remember the name, he is the one controlling the bad guy that stays up there. So I don't know. I feel like that guy, that white, um, that uses a white shirt, he is probably the main villain and the, the founder 
or something like that of Creasa Corp. But that blue villain is the one who's controlling everything now. Now he's the one controlling everything and he is the boss, but he doesn't really want to show that he's the boss. There's probably a reason for that and I'm very curious. Uh, and so Papadou was very angry and she went on to create an Oshimaida for this episode and she was trying to defeat the Cures again. Uh, but not only that, it was the first time that we actually saw a villain trying to enhance Oshimaida with dark power, the dark energy, and Papadou did that with her fan because Jealous was looking, Jealous was paying attention to everything that was going on, and ultimately we knew Papadou was going to fail, we knew that it was not going to succeed, but um, she was actually able to put up a little bit of a fight. So, you know, Amur and Mashiri, they went on, they talked, and they didn't really talk, but they sang it through, and it was really nice. Um, I liked that they were able to understand themselves, to understand one another with the music, because that's something very present for both of them, it seems, because it was something that called emotions in Lulu when she was not feeling emotions at all, and we all know how music, and especially a guitar, is important to Emiru. Uh, but in the fight, when Papuru enhanced the monster, the monster was able to break Emiru's guitar, and that created a situation in which Unfortunately, they don't have, uh, Emiru doesn't have like that loved guitar of hers anymore. Um, and you know, this fight was interesting because the girls, uh, I thought that Amur and Mashiri were going to be able to defeat the monster by themselves, but it wasn't like that. I mean, the girls had to come in, the girls had to do, use their own powers to defeat the monster. I mean, they were probably able to defeat it, but I don't think that Toy wanted um, the three Hucto girls without using their powers in an actual episode anymore. So I don't really understand why, but I think that, um, I don't know, I just it just felt really strange. I mean, they were able to defeat the monster last episode and now they, they, they're not anymore. But uh, I just think it was because, you know, Toy wanted to remind us that the Melody Swords were there. And there was also the fact that Machiri now wants the um the 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 actual melody swords for her to use because they are not able to you know they're not able to be strong enough without a weapon at least that's what it seems so far and they want a weapon of their own as well especially Mashiri Amur is not really thinking about it uh, and so they asked Harry, uh, and Harry's now with a little drama on him because. Um, the eight midnight crystals are there, they are all reunited, but Hutton was not able to go back to her real self. We don't know who her real self is. Harry is full of secrets, and I think that we are on to something on Hutton, and we're probably going to learn more about her in the future episodes. Maybe we're entering Hutton's saga. But so, uh, Amashiri was asking for a guitar, and she was asking for a weapon, and Hutton simply summoned something. And then, it happened. The real surprise of episode 21 happened right at the end, and guys, I just can't believe it. When I saw it yesterday, because I was on Twitter and I saw the spoilers, I was like, oh my god, is it real? Is it true? Is it really happening? Hutton summoned Cure Black and Cure White. Right at the end, our two original Cures, the ones who started the legacy, the ones who brought us this amazing franchise. There's nothing else to say. I mean, I was really, really emotional. I was so shocked. And, you know, I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. And then, uh, next episode, next episode is going to be like the uh, roller coaster of emotions. Papadou is going to become like the big bad villain, and she's probably going to be defeated, and I'm gonna hate that. Um, I love Jealous, so it's gonna be nice having Jealous there, but I'm gonna miss my girl. I'm gonna miss my girl. Um, and Cure Black and Cure White are there, you know, oh my god. Uh, and... Cure Black and Cure White are there 
I have no words. I am really excited to see that, and I, I really want to see what are they, what they're gonna do in Hangzhou, and I really hope that they are, uh, their participation is going to be very special next episode. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be. I mean, just them appearing there is very special for me and for all Precure fans, I think. Uh, we all have to cherish this moment because this is very, very special. I don't know if you guys remember, but I was thinking and I, I, I recall that when we were seeing like uh, magazine scans on Hauto, there was one scan that said that black and white were going to appear on Hauto. After a while, I actually thought that they were going to appear in the movie only, and that's what this scan was mentioning, but it was not the case. It's not the case. They are appearing in the season itself. I just can't believe it, guys. I'm so, so, so excited for next week. You guys have no idea. Anyways, please leave a comment with your opinions on episode 21, on this exciting turn of events. Anyways, I am just in awe, and... I don't even know what to say. Guys, thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.